Moss Landing, thank you for watching KION 546. Right now at 5, Santa Clara County resumes its annual search and rescue demonstration. The latest techniques being used to help you in case of an emergency. Plus, the Central Coast is in store for some pretty severe weather this weekend. How you can prepare for the storm. And I am tracking that storm. Find out when it will arrive and what you can expect from it. Plus, we take a look at what underinsured Californians can do in light of fires, floods, and other disasters. This is KION News Channel 546 at 5. Thanks so much for being here for KION News at 5, everyone. I'm Taryn Mitchell. While well, rain is forecasted for the Central Coast this weekend, with Santa Cruz County issuing evacuation orders for people who live in areas that could be affected by debris flow from the CZU Lightning Complex burn scar. Here's a look at the areas that are right now under evacuation orders. Anyone who lives in these areas in red must evacuate by 8 a.m. tomorrow. This is an interactive map which allows you to input your address to see whether or not you are under an evacuation order. This can be found on our website, kion546.com. If you have any questions about evacuation orders or resources, you can call the number on your screen. That is to get notifications directly from the county. You can visit scr911.org and register your number. People who need assistance evacuating large animals and livestock should call 831-708-8998. The county plans to open a shelter tomorrow morning at 8, but has yet to say where that shelter will be. In the meantime, the sheriff's office is out today knocking on doors in high-risk areas that will likely be damaged by debris flow. Let's go ahead and turn over to Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca, who has been tracking and keeping tabs on the situation. Good evening, Dan. Hey there, Taryn. The storm has been gaining strength over the Pacific overnight. We can see this big burst of clouds associated with it, an area of low pressure right here really developing still, so it's still in the process of forming some of the rain already reaching Northern California, really the tail end of another weak system that just kind of preceded it. But we're already getting that high level moisture in the form of high clouds here today. And this is really just going to ramp up as we head into the overnight hours into tomorrow. Already flash flood watches in effect for the burn scar specifically in the Santa Cruz Mountains and also the Santa Lucia range in Los Padres National Forest. There are some of those scars on your screen, including the CZU complex and all of the fire scars. Monterey County, uh, the higher potential of debris flows with some of these rainfall rates is there. And on top of that, there's potential for urban and small stream flooding as well as some heavy rain is expected in the coming days. In fact, this is raw model output of rainfall totals expected through Monday afternoon. And you can see that many cities around the Bay in that one to three inch range in coastal mountains. We've been talking three to five inches all week with some areas closing in on seven inches. And that certainly will be possible as we head through the day. I'm going to take you through the storm tomorrow uh, hour by hour. We're going to talk about the wind. We're going to talk about when the heaviest rain is going to reach your neighborhood. And we also have some other hazards, including some ocean hazards to talk about. That's all coming up in a bit. Thanks so much, Dan. To help people prepare for the rain, the Santa Cruz Central Fire Department is offering free sand and sandbags to you. This will be at their main headquarters. Sandbags are self-serve and available 24-7, so people are responsible for filing, filling their own bags. And there is a limit of five bags per household. After the fires and the pandemic, home prices and the cost to rebuild are much higher. Now insurers are saying that incoming rain is making for not so perfect storm for the 20 to 30 percent of Californians who are underinsured. Federal numbers from August show that the price of building materials are actually up 19.4 percent from last year and that the price of homes are also on the rise. So what should you do if you can't afford to rebuild and are underinsured? Really, one of the best people to ask is ask a contractor what the cost to build per foot is that they're seeing. And while it usually takes 30 days for insurance protections to take effect, agents say that making sure your home is properly insured can really help you out in the off chance that a disaster strikes. The Santa Clara, Santa Clara Sheriff's Office Search and Rescue Team held their 2021 annual mock search today at the Henrico Park. This was alongside Academy recruits to simulate the search for missing persons in the park. Our very own Stephanie Aceves was at Henrico Park where she spoke with organizers about the demo search. Good evening, Stephanie. Taryn, things were busy here in the morning as search teams were being deployed in search of their simulated missing persons. 
Academy recruits were suited up and ready to go on their commitment of not only finding their missing person, but also surviving the night without a tent and sleeping bag, using only the materials in their backpacks. When Academy recruit says he does this for the community. We're not allowed tents, we're not allowed sleeping bags, so we're basically it's a tarp. You have to figure out how to set up a, a shelter to keep warm at night. And I love uh, helping the people in my community. This is an excellent way for uh, me to continue helping with my community. The search and rescue demo is meant to simulate the real deal with about three people that have been planted throughout the park. One assignment with serious medical injuries, the other located in difficult terrain. They've spent about uh, the last eight weeks or so learning different skills that they're going to need out in the field. This is an opportunity for them to put it all together and it's an opportunity for our seasoned members you know, to renew the, some of their skill sets. KION got the opportunity to survey some of the area in the Santa Clara Sheriff's Office helicopter where the teams have been planted within the park. Henry Coe State Park is one of the largest state parks in Northern California with 87,000 acres of rugged land. Three helicopters were present in today's demo from CAL FIRE, STAR 1 from the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office and the National Guard. We open our, our mock search up to many, many different agencies um, so that it more closely resembles what we would see in the real world if we had a, a large missing person event that required mutual aid and requ we requested assistance from our neighboring search and rescue teams and our neighboring counties. So far, both divisions have found all three missing subjects, but both will need to spend the night in the park until tomorrow morning. In Henry Co. Park, Stephanie Aceves, KION News Channel 546. 70 million Americans are eligible to get a COVID-19 booster shot this weekend. The CDC has approved boosters for all three vaccines, that being Pfizer, Moderna and Johnson & Johnson. And the approval for children may just be around the corner. People can now decide to mix vaccines to increase protection. A small National Institute of Health study awaiting peer review actually found three doses of Moderna offered the highest level of protection, followed by two shots of Pfizer and then Moderna. Anyone who received Johnson & Johnson single-dose vaccine would be protected if they got either the Pfizer or Moderna shot as a booster. To better protect adults who took the Johnson & Johnson shot, health officials have minimized the requirements for them. For those who got J&J, &J, everybody is eligible if you got your dose more than two months ago. So anybody who got J&J, &J, if their dose is more than two months ago, then they are eligible for a boost. An FDA advisory committee meeting scheduled for this coming week will consider Pfizer's modified vaccine for children. If this is approved by the FDA, children could begin receiving the shots in early November. Harnell College is now requiring all students to show proof of being fully vaccinated by December 10th. The college says that they are considering requests for medical and religious exemptions. The school also added the deadline does not affect the student's ability to complete the fall semester. Details about how employee vaccine requirements will be implemented have not yet been decided. Let's take a look at your crime alert this evening. Three people accused of stealing a catalytic converter have been placed under arrest. Officers with the Santa Cruz Police Department did get a call about a catalytic converter theft. This was at an apartment complex on the 100 block of Morrissey Boulevard. The caller said that the suspects had gotten away with the converter. Luckily, sheriff's deputies were able to locate the suspect's vehicle and stop it in Aptos. During their investigation, the catalytic converter was located along with a two floor jack and two saws with the eight rounds of a 22 caliber ammunition. Last night, officers with the Hollister Police Department responded to the 100 block of McCray Street. That was in regards to the report of a subject was down inside of a vehicle and was unresponsive. Upon their arrival, officers located a Hollister resident who was later arrested for a DUI. A search of the suspect's car revealed the loaded unregistered ghost handgun in the center console of the vehicle. They have been booked in the San Benito County Jail on DUI and weapon charges. New details today in the fatal movie set shooting involving actor Alec Baldwin. A search warrant reveals that an assistant director actually handed the prop gun to Baldwin and indicated it was safe to use and did not have live ammo. Omar Villafranca reports from Santa Fe, New Mexico. Moments before Alec Baldwin fired a prop gun that killed the cinematographer, 
Court documents show Assistant Director Dave Halls handed the actor the weapon and yelled, cold gun. The Santa Fe County Sheriff's Office says Halls did not know the weapon actually held live rounds. Helena Hutchins was shot in the chest and pronounced dead after being airlifted to a hospital. Director Joel Souza was wounded in the shoulder. Kevin Williams has supervised prop guns for 20 years. Generally on set, you have either the prop master or a set armorer who's going to be maintaining chain of control uh, from when the weapons are in the trucks to when they hit the set to when they go to the actor's hands. Investigators are now focusing on the wooden chapel-like structure on the set of Baldwin's Western, Rust. Items of interest include video captured during filming, firearms, computer equipment, and clothing that may still be in the building. Investigators already seized Baldwin's Old West costume, which appears to have blood stains. The actor says it was a tragic accident and that he's heartbroken over Hutchins' death. CBS News editor Gustavo Sampaio worked closely with Hutchins on a short film. She really was a rising star. I was uh, very impressed and proud of her. Um, I, I often thought that I wanted to work with her again. In Albuquerque Saturday night, Hutchins' friends and colleagues planned to hold a vigil in her memory. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Coming up, Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianco will have your cold weather forecast for the rest of the weekend. Plus, California wildfires have caused an increase in sickly and injured animals throughout the state. How one shelter is changing its way after an injured bear cub escapes. And later, a volcano erupts, placing villages and forcing thousands of people to flee their homes. If you have a question or a concern, don't forget to message Max. Pottery Planet in Santa Cruz, offering a great selection of pottery, fountains, home decor, wall art, and unique gift items. Find outdoor furniture and fire pits. We're now fully open and observing all social distancing protocol. Pottery Planet, Santa Cruz. Community Human Services is now providing free mental health counseling support to uninsured and Medi-Cal insured residents of Monterey County. Details at chservices.org. Community Human Services. Hope. Help. Here. I think there's enormous potential for the Blue Zone Project in Monterey County because we can again reframe that question of what do we think about when we go to the doctor. What's wonderful about the Blue Zone Project is it provides this simple blueprint of what to do for health. If we learn to integrate Blue Zones Project's ideas into our lives, both as Monterey County and in our little communities, it would be amazing to see the health that we can develop. Join me in creating a healthier Monterey County. Are you hiring in the Central Coast area? Post your jobs on SantaCruzJobs.com or MontereyBayJobs.com and reach more candidates than any other job sites. We have hundreds of jobs posted from reputable employers, helping local businesses in the Central Coast area get great results. Because we provide the best candidates for the best price. Post your jobs today. SantaCruzJobs.com or MontereyBayJobs.com. Free for job seekers and great for business. The Bennetts really know how to put their Wi-Fi to work. Whether it's work work. Works for me. School work. It worked. Or a workout. I'm working. They've got Xfinity, which delivers Wi-Fi faster than a gig for all their devices. It's more than enough to keep everyone working. Can your internet do that? This is work. This is hard. Learn more about gig speed Wi-Fi or get started with Xfinity Internet for $19.99 a month for 12 months. Click, call, or visit a store today. Welcome back. We go across the nation now where progressive and moderate Democrats are at odds over the multi-trillion dollar Democratic spending bill and finding it difficult to compromise. The original $3.5 trillion bill is being whittled down to about $2 trillion. Now Democrats must decide what to keep and what to cut from climate change to expanded Medicare. The green aspects of this, the climate aspects of it, they are resolved. In terms of the uh, One decision that both moderates and progressives so far agree on, universal pre-K. Under the president's Build Back Better plan, the federal government would pay the startup cost for every state to offer pre-kindergarten education. But another education provision, Free Community College, a passion project for First Lady Joe Biden, didn't make the cut. 
In other news, information from the Facebook whistleblower is revealing more about the company's role in the U.S. Capitol riots back on January 6th. Francis Hogan provided Congress censored internal documents from Facebook about the insurrection. The pages included an internal analysis by Facebook focused on the spread of the Stop the Steal and Patriot Party movements. The analysis found Facebook's policies did not slow down or stop the growth of either campaigns. Back here in California, a rescue center that treated animals injured in Northern California's wildfires has now been ordered to make repairs. This is after an injured bear cub escaped from the center. The bear leak plays an important role in saving injured bears and nursing them back to health. But they came under some fire earlier this year when a bear cub that had been burned in the Tamarack fire escaped from Lake Tahoe Wildlife Care. A massive search for the cub happened. Both the state and the members of the league don't want something like this to happen again. We don't want these little rescue bears to be escaping and, and be running off and, and not be able to be cared for. Now before it can renew its per permit and welcome back bears, the Department of Fish and Wildlife is requiring, requiring the center to dig deeper fencing and make the bear enclosure more secure. Lake Tahoe Wildlife Car is one of four bear rehab centers in the state. Caught on camera, the destruction on Spain's La Palma Island after a nearby volcano erupted. Lava from the volcano has covered nearly 2,000 acres of land and destroyed 2,000 buildings and many banana plantations since the eruption started back on September 19th. More than 6,000 people have had to leave their homes. Let's get a check this evening on the weather forecast with Chief Meteorologist Dan Sianca. Good evening, Dan. Hey there, Taryn. Still some time today to get out and prepare yourself for the storm coming tomorrow. And some things you might want to think about if you live in the mountains, especially near the coast, you may be without power for a good period of time tomorrow night into Monday morning. You better be ready for that. If you live uh, downstream of a burn scar, there's the potential for debris flow, so you should be for ready for that. It's a good thing to have those emergency kits handy. You can use the same one basically you use for earthquakes that you should have handy as well. Just something to think about as we get into the day tomorrow. Things pretty calm out there tonight on your Saturday. Upper 50s to 60s around the bay, not too much warmer inland. We do have some clouds that have spread in after some morning sunshine. These clouds thickening up in advance of the weather system that is approaching from the west. And uh, this is going to be arriving here on the central coast tomorrow. I do want to take you through everything. And we do have several impacts to talk about, starting with the winds, because they'll be here a little bit earlier, I think than anything else, although most areas won't necessarily notice right away. There are wind advisories for the entire viewing area. As for Santa Cruz and Santa Clara counties, you go under that advisory at 5 a.m. And then down south, Monterey and San Benito counties, you go under that advisory at 11 a.m. Winds will slowly really increase throughout the day tomorrow until a climax tomorrow evening as the frontal boundary comes through. But for the most part, you'll see 15 to 25 mile per hour southerly winds with occasional higher gusts. And if you live near the coast or an exposed ridges near the coast. I think we could see wind gusts closing in on 60 miles per hour and that's certainly enough to knock down a few tree limbs and even some diseased or distressed trees could get knocked down as well. And once that happens, you're talking road closures, you're talking power outages and potentially property damage too if you're not trimming those trees close to your home. So be ready for that tomorrow. Also, maybe difficult for you to drive. The winds not just over land, they're out over the water as well. Gale warnings for the bay and for the near coastal waters all the way through tomorrow night, so just keep that in mind as well. If you are planning on heading out on the water tomorrow, probably a day to skip. As for the rain, well, it's going to take some time for most areas to see it, with the exception of some other areas that may actually get a little bit tonight. We do have the tail end of a weak system sliding by, may bring a little bit of light precipitation to the Santa Cruz Mountains at overnight tonight at times, and then tomorrow morning you may even see some brief moderate rainfall. Now, the air is going to moisten up as we go through the day tomorrow, and this atmospheric river will start pushing that moist air into the hills, so we'll start getting some rain in the coastal mountains early in the day tomorrow, whereas most lower elevation locations won't see much of anything at all, especially if you live in the inland valleys. It's just going to be kind of breezy and humid, but up in the mountains, it's going to be raining. We're talking light to moderate rain kicking up tomorrow morning and then really continuing for most of the day in the mountains. Then the actual cold front will start making its approach. Now, this is 2 p.m. tomorrow. We see the line of rain beginning to move into Santa Cruz County at 4 p.m., and I'm pretty much on board with the timing of this model, uh, so we're going to be pretty close with 
in a couple of hours of what's uh, actually going to happen tomorrow, I think. So 4 p.m. we'll start to see that more heavier rainfall in Santa Cruz County and then getting to the lower elevations as well. So we're talking in Santa Cruz and Capitola, even into Watsonville as we head into that 5, 6 p.m. hour. And then as we head through 6 and 7 p.m., we start to see it spreading into Monterey, Salinas, Hollister and Gilroy. You're going to start to see some of that heavier rainfall as well. And then that'll keep pushing to the south and even behind it, the air rain is going to keep coming and coming uh, across the Santa Cruz Mountains all that time and then still pushing south as we head through midnight, 3 a.m. still filled in around the bay and continuing to move into our southern county uh, valleys as well. And then by 6 a.m. we start to see it break up a little bit. So we're going to get an extended period of rain in those coastal mountains somewhere between 12 to 18 hours of moderate to heavy rain, whereas coastal cities and you know our northern inland cities will probably see about six hours of rain tomorrow night. Behind that on Monday, a few lingering showers, maybe even a rumble of thunder, and that's about it with it. On top of that, the storm also building some big swells. Let's take a look at that. Uh, and they'll be coming in from the northwest, and uh, some of those swells could be pretty massive. This is a look at future wave tracker. We're looking at 14 or 40 foot swells out over the uh, open ocean. Those will start to make their approach late tomorrow night and into Monday and perhaps lasting into Tuesday as well. So big swells on the coast. There is a high surf warning going into effect late tomorrow night, and really that's going to last into Monday and probably Tuesday as well. I think they updated that to go to Tuesday. So Monday and Tuesday, not a good day to be near the water. We're talking huge breakers, and uh, they could knock you off the rocks, the jetties. It's just going to be a dangerous place. I'm going to go through your temperature forecast quickly tomorrow, so find your city on the map. 61 in Santa Cruz, Watsonville staying in the mid-60s. Salinas still pretty mild. You won't see much sunshine tomorrow, but the southerly winds will keep you muggy in 69 tomorrow. Monterey also staying pretty mild with highs in the mid 60s and we may touch uh, we'll get close to 70 in some of our southern valleys but that's about as warm as it gets tomorrow again warm muggy ahead of that atmospheric river and then again it's going to last through Monday morning and then a few showers may linger into Tuesday on the coast beyond that we're dry and tranquil for the rest of the week and inland areas also you'll see the winds by the way knock down early on Monday morning and then start to die off but rain late Sunday Lasting into Monday, please stay tuned to my forecast. We'll be here live at 10 and 11 tonight. We'll also be, I'll also be in the studio tomorrow as well at 5, 10, and 11 to keep you up to date on the storm. So make sure to tune in on air and online. Taryn. Dan, Highway 17 is back open at the summit. This is after police activity shut it down earlier today. The CHP confirms that the road was closed in both directions. This was between Summit and Sugarloaf Roads. Caltrans confirmed that the highway reopened just after 2.30 this afternoon. Well, coming up next, why you might want to start stocking up on Christmas presents now. How the supply chain crisis is expected to affect the holidays. If you have a question or a concern, don't forget to message Max. Hello and welcome back. The Lackey Dental Team is dedicated to improving and maintaining your health. Let us help you keep your smile bright. If your credit card debt is out of control, if you're in over your head in monthly payments, there's a secret the credit card companies don't want you to know. If you have more than $10,000 in credit card debt, you have the right to let us settle that debt for a fraction of what you owe. That's bad news for the credit card companies, but it's great news for you. We're Credit Associates, and we're offering you free information on how to completely resolve your credit card debt with a monthly payment you can afford. To see how much you could save, call now, 1-800-906-2439. Don't declare bankruptcy. Don't consolidate. Give us 10 minutes and we could save you thousands. After all, we depend on your success and offer a guarantee so there's no risk to call. Credit Associates, live better debt free. We'll even show you how to use your stimulus money to jumpstart our services and get you debt free faster than you ever thought possible. Call Credit Associates now to see how much you could save for free. Call 1-800-906-2439. My Chevrolet, when you need a car, truck, say my Chevrolet, in our Salinas Valley, the best two words to say, 
When you need a car, truck, say my Chevrolet. Get 0% APR for 72 months on a new 2021 Chevy Silverado. Visit MyChevrolet.org for more details and find new roads. My Chevrolet. My Chevrolet in the Salinas Auto Mall. From California State University, Monterey Bay. Listener supported 90.3. KAZU. Monterey, Salinas, Santa Cruz. NPR for the Monterey Bay Area. Welcome back. If you plan on hosting family and friends this holiday season, well, you might want to start stocking up on gifts now. Major retailers don't anticipate the national supply chain crisis will end anytime soon. John Lorenz takes a closer look. Last minute shoppers may want to change their ways this holiday season. Order early. Um, you know, I think we have to uh, set realistic expectations. Disruptions related to the COVID-19 pandemic are affecting the global supply chain. There's been gridlock at the Port of Los Angeles where shipping containers holding everything from toys to sneakers have been stuck offshore. Among the products affected, alcohol. We had 50 people waiting in line just to see what we had coming in this morning because it's a, it's a guessing game for us just as it is the guest. They don't know what's coming, we don't know what's coming. We see the orders the day before, we, we get them to, in the morning, we put it out for sale and they're gone by the end of the day. Large food producers warn some of their products could be limited come fall and winter. Some fear President Biden's December 8th mandate for companies who work with the federal government to lay off employees who don't get vaccinated for COVID-19 will make matters worse. Because we already have a critical shortage of, of folks that are working through the supply chain, uh, you know, that, that order would only exacerbate, uh, exacerbate the issue. For KION News Channel 546, I'm John Lawrence. The National Association of Wholesaler Distributors say that they are pushing for all workers to be vaccinated. But adds some are threatening to quit rather than get their shots. Officials at the association are calling on the White House to delay the December 8th vaccine deadline and to amend the order to feature a testing option. We'll see you after the break. For local stories that matter, watch KION 546. California, the future should be built for everyone. So we gave the 2021 Ford F-150 the only full hybrid engine available in the class. Built it to power ideas anywhere with an available ProPower onboard generator and a new interior designed to keep you connected. This is a new generation of F-Series, the best-selling truck for 44 years, and it's only the beginning. Now get the 2021 Ford F-150 with 0% financing for 72 months, only at your California Ford dealers, where the future comes standard. The pain level was over 10. There's days where I just sat and cried and, and asked the good Lord to take me. And my doctor recommended that I go to Good Feet and try the arch supports. And I took about three, four steps, turned around and went and sat back down and started to cry. It was the first time that I had no pain. I'm not an actor. I want people to know my testimony. I want them to know what arch supports can do from Good Feet. See for yourself with a free personalized arch support fitting at the Good Feet store. Hi, I'm Gary Vick from Carl's Jr. Restaurants, the place where food dreams become reality. The California International Air Show is back this October 30th and 31st and will feature the United States Air Force Thunderbirds, Monster Trucks, the Kid Zone, World Class Drag Racing, and more. We want to give you a chance to bring along a friend. So stop by any Monterey County Carl's Jr. and get two California International Air Show tickets for the price of one when you purchase any delicious combo meal. See you there. And considering that slight downward trend, we may be... Uh, oh, boy. Uh, we, we might be smart to actually consider a slight pivot. Any questions? Oh. A home office chair is like roadside assistance. Quality matters. So join AAA, America's most recommended roadside service, from $5 a month. Don't miss the California International Air Show October 30th and 31st featuring the United States Air Force Thunderbirds. Get your tickets today at salinasairshow.com. Welcome back. Today is National Make a Difference Day, a day when millions of people do something to improve the lives of others. The holiday has become the largest national day of community service in the country. To celebrate, people can volunteer at a local organization, 
You can be a mentor or make a donation to a charity. And if you aren't able to do any of these things, no worries. Simply say a kind word of support to someone struggling. Dan, I appreciate you. Am I struggling? <laughs> You're not struggling, but I appreciate it. You're doing a great job, Tara. We don't hear that enough, thank you. Right. <laughs> I think we have a lot to get to and um, take a look at weather. Final look at weather, weather system on the way into the region tomorrow. Please stay tuned to the forecast. Heavy rain expected to arrive late tomorrow evening, even as early as maybe dinner time. And we'll start getting heavier tomorrow night. Of course, we'll be keeping a close eye on it for you. And we'll be keeping a close eye on that later on at 10 and 11 for you folks. Have a wonderful evening.